بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته peace be with you the prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام was in Medina he came back with the companions from Badr and they were now dealing with their life of course always uh, watchful about what could happen and dealing with intelligence but he was uh, dealing with the community with his family with uh, what was important for the daily life in Medina and we have to stop for a while because of course we deal with the Sira of the Prophet والسلام, his biography with great events but there are details in his life that are shedding some light about the spiritual dimension of his daily life, the way he was dealing with himself, with his family and within the community. And we know uh, from what uh, Aisha uh, anha said about the Prophet ﷺ that he was uh, praying for hours uh, during the nights, uh, all the time and she was surprised that he was praying so much so once uh, she asked him uh, don't you exaggerate الله, are you not exaggerating O messenger of God uh, and Allah has forgiven you what you did and what you will do all your sins the past and the future and the Prophet ﷺ told her, أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا شَقُورًا Don't I have to be a thankful servant? Meaning that in fact you don't pray because you are a sinner. You don't pray because you have something to be uh, uh, forgiven. You pray because you thank God. So it's a relationship of love based on thanking Him and this is the way the Prophet ﷺ was doing and at the same time while he was very demanding with himself he tried not to put too much uh, harsh and burden on the community so for example we know this as uh, to a tarawih he went the first time to pray the tarawih and then he stopped going for the community not to understand that this was a duty it's a sunnah it's a sunnah so it's not an obligation it's good to do it but it's not as the other obligations that we have during the day the five uh, prayers that we have to 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 perform every day so he was demanding with himself trying to lighten the burden of the community now once he heard that uh, uh, one of the companions, Abdullah, was very harsh with himself and he went to him and he told him, Ya Abdullah, alam ukhbar annaka tasoom in nahar wa taqoom al-layl? Qultu bala ya Rasulullah, qala fala taf'al, sum wa aftir, qum wa nam, fa inna li jasadika alayka haqqa, wa inna li aynika alayka haqqa, wa inna li zawjika alayka haqqa. What the Prophet ﷺ told him, he went to Abdullah and he heard, I heard that you are praying during the night and that you are fasting. And Abdullah said, yes, this is what I do, O Messenger of God. And then Allah and the Prophet ﷺ responded, do not do that. Observe the fast sometimes and leave it sometimes. Stand up for prayer uh, during the night sometimes and also sleep at night and he added something which was now it's a famous saying of the Prophet ﷺ, your body has a right over you your eyes have rights over you and your wife has a right over you meaning you have to give to every dimension of your life your body your eyes your uh, life your nights and your days it's all, uh, right and this is the way you are just with yourself so he was dealing with a, a, a companion here and telling him you have just not to put too much on your shoulders you have to find a balanced way of dealing with with God and on this we remember another story with the Prophet the story of Handala Hanzala was a, a, a companion and once he met with uh, um, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq. When he met Abu Bakr Siddiq, he, he said, I'm a hypocrite. Why am I a hypocrite? When I'm close to the Prophet, it's as if I can see the paradise and everything. I'm close to God. And then I go back home with my family 
and I forget everything. It's as if the world is taking me back uh, and I'm forgetful. And uh, um, uh, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq said, it's the same for me. So let us go uh, and ask the Prophet And the Prophet uh, told them, look, that's normal, that's natural. If you were in the same spiritual state as when you are with me all the time, the angels would shake your hand in your bed or along your path. So you have to, to understand that this is the very nature of human being. You have to understand that there is a time uh, for praying and there is a time for resting. That's not hypocrisy. That's just your natural state. Look at the way the Prophet ﷺ was making it understandable for people just keep the balance understand in which way you have to deal with your own self and in which way you have to be patient in your relationship with God but be patient with God is also does also mean acknowledge the very nature of your mind of your heart and of your life that's something which it's uh, necessary for all of us if you don't get this we end up nurturing a sense of guilt all the time it's as if we think our spiritual journey against our very nature that's not the way we need to think and we need to build and we need to educate ourselves based on our nature not against it so and this is an essential teaching that we get from the Prophet ﷺ in his life, in the way he was dealing with his companions, in the way he was trying to make things easy. One day, he was in the mosque and a, a Bedouin entered the mosque and started urinating in the mosque. And the companions saw this, they wanted to kill him. The Prophet ﷺ said, leave him alone leave him alone just what you have to do with him here is just you throw a bucket full of water on his urine this is what you have to do and it was a message look with his understanding to do something like this it's for you to understand that maybe he doesn't know or he is not intellectually able to get the very nature of a sacred space and then what he said to the companion, yassiru wa la tu'asiru, makes things easy for people. Don't try just, I'm going to kill you for that. This is the way because you think that the more aggressive you are in the name of what is right means that this is the best way to react. No. If you see something which is wrong with wisdom, you try to reform it. And through this pedagogy, he changed hearts. He educated the people around you out of softness, gentleness, as we know that uh, the Prophet ﷺ was always dealing with the companion. And there is another story. And all this is happening in, this is the daily life of the Prophet ﷺ. And through these stories, we get teachings, we get a deeper understanding. This is the Bedouin. He came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, I'm lost, I'm lost. So what is happening? He said, I'm lost. I had intercourse with my, my wife during the fasting hours of Ramadan. That's I'm lost. I said, okay, okay, look, you know what you have to do is you have to go and to give charity. He said, I have nothing to give. I'm poor. I said, okay, sit here and wait. And he uh, sat there and the Prophet ﷺ got some gift, a dish of food from uh, an Arab who came to give him this. So the Prophet ﷺ, where is the one who is lost? And he said, I'm here. I said, come, take this and go and just distribute this to the poor people in your community. He said, to somebody poorer than me, my family has nothing to eat. The Prophet ﷺ smiled and said, okay, took it for your family and uh, go with it. And he smiled, look, he came saying, I'm lost. He went back with a dish of food, a smile and forgiveness. As if when he thought everything was collapsing because he did something wrong, the Prophet ﷺ welcomed him, covered uh, uh, his uh, sin and gave him what he needed. And because this is also 
a, a dimension in our life. You don't judge the people at the same level if you are educated and uh, having a comfortable uh, way of life. Here he is poor, he has nothing, and yes, he made a mistake, and through this he was also getting the best from the Prophet Remember that the Prophet said once to Aisha something that we need to meditate, not only to meditate, but we need to implement it in our life. He said once to Aisha, Ya Aisha, Inna Allah rafiqun yuhibbu rifq wa yu'ti ala rifq ma la yu'ti ala l'unf wa ma la yu'ti ala ma siwa. He said, Allah, God is rafiq. Rafiq is generous. He is uh, full of uh, gentleness and he likes rifq. He likes this generosity. He likes this uh, subtle way, delicacy, the way you are with people, in the way you look, in the way you speak, in the way you give, in you, the, the way you welcome. And he said, and Allah gives for gentleness, for this softness, for this delicacy, what he does not give for violence or uh, aggressivity or anything else. And he gives. For this, this human quality that it's necessary for us to get in our uh, life, in the way we are with the people we love and uh, through our interconnection and interpersonal relationship. It has to do with gentleness, it has to do with kindness. The Prophet ﷺ was also showing around him something which for us should be a, a pillar of our connection. Remember that the last uh, verses of the Quran, the last chapters of the Quran, are in fact the first to be revealed. There is no a single reference to faith without dealing with poverty, with the way you are with the poor. In fact, the way you are with the poor, the last, will tell you the way you are with the first. And Allah, at the end of the day, is the first and the last. At the end, you will come back to him if you serve the poor. The Prophet ﷺ, around his house, fi al Madina, Ahl al-Sufa, they were there, the people of the bench, they were there, and they were poor people, some because they have no choice, and others because they wanted to, to, to escape this worldly uh, uh, attention and attraction, just to be completely connected to God. And he was day in, day out, giving them, being very, very uh, attentive to their need, to the point that once Khadija anha, who was serving Ahl al-Sufa, she was so tired that she went and she asked him for help. In fact, she went and she was too shy to ask. So Ali went and asked, we need somebody, maybe a, a slave that somebody offered you that can help us. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I can't. I can't give you what Ahl al-Sufa don't get. So I'm sorry. Try to find a way. And they went. He was, you know, Ali Karramallahu Wajha was sad. He went back home. And the Prophet ﷺ, late in the evening, went to their home and he entered, sat at uh, 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 their bedside and said, Look, I don't have what you are asking me. Meaning, I don't have money, I don't have slave, I don't have anybody who can help you. But I have supplications. Don't forget to tell 10 times during the day and 33 times before sleeping. Subhanallah, glory to God. Alhamdulillah, praise be to God. Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. You know what you say every day, today, what we say as Muslims? It came from this story. It came from Fatima. Uh, عنها, the daughter of the Prophet asking for help, he said, I might not, I am not able to give you materialistic help or physical help, but this is the spiritual help you need. As if, you know, this is the strength that they got out of his presence and in the way he was educated, uh, educating them. So he was showing this kind of uh, affection, spiritual teaching, commitment, and uh, closeness to the people, even to the children. And once again, you know, the customs during uh, his time around, among the Arabs, and 
by the way, it's still the same in too many cultures, Asian cultures and Arab culture. We don't show enough that we love our children. And the Prophet ﷺ was used to take Hassan, his uh, grandson, the son of uh, Fatima, uh, عنها, and to kiss him. And one Arab Bedouin saw him say, okay, I have 10 children, I don't kiss them. And the Prophet ﷺ said, this is not the way. Man la yarham la yurham. The one who does not show mercy, love, and uh, generosity will not get it from God. Meaning, once again, the way you are with your children, remember, is also the way you are going to be treated by God. And for us, this relationship, silat al rahim, with our children, with our grandchildren, with our parents, is also something that we need to get because Silat al-Rahim is coming from a rahman Ar-Rahman is one of the names of God. So once again, he was teaching and, and showing the way, not only in battles, not only through great events, but in his uh, daily life, as we saw also with Fatima. You know, there is a story, we are not used to quote this story because it's as if it's not so important. Once a Persian guy came to the Prophet ﷺ and wanted to invite him to eat for dinner. And the Prophet ﷺ was with Aisha radiallahu anha. And uh, he said, I want to invite you for dinner. I said, and what about her? I said, no, you. I said, I can't come. Second time. I want to invite you for dinner. With what about her? I can't. Uh, 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 not her, you only. And then the third time, what about her? He said, okay, you can come together. And he said, okay, we will come. You know this way of educating people? It's not just to enter within the culture and say that's all wrong. You m need to make the people understand from within how they can change their understanding, how they can change their perception of things. And this take, takes time. It's not an easy process. Cultural changes are very, very scary for the people from within the culture themselves. And this is why it takes time and you have to do this. And this is the Prophet, Aisha uh, Salam showing, you know, at the end of the day, it's a question of men and women. It's a question of a couple. It's a question that you have to respect the presence of women within the community and not making your religion a uh, manly. Uh, project. No, that's not. And this is exactly the same, uh, by the way, within our mosques, uh, because the Prophet ﷺ had his family, his own daughter, coming to and praying in the mosque. Aisha is talking about this. Uh, the mosques are not a uh, closed space mainly for men. They have to be open space for all. That's the way the Prophet ﷺ was, and we saw this in uh, the way he was dealing. One last story here that we need to add in this discussion is you know that the Prophet ﷺ very often got the same questions and he had different answers for every uh, uh, body. Meaning what? Meaning in the process of listening to your questions, I need to understand who you are, from where you listen to me, how is your experience with love and his answers were different here and we need to get this we need to get this because it's a way to show that you are attentive to the people that you uh, uh, care for them and this is the way the prophet he changed the world caring about every single soul around him by listening to oh okay i not only need to get your question i need to get you i need to listen to your question and read you so that's the way he showed us uh, how to deal with uh, our fellow human beings as educators, as teachers, and as human beings. Now, during this period of time, two things happen that we need to keep in mind. The visit of uh, uh, the Christians of Najran, they came for a discussion with the Prophet Wasallam, and they came and they uh, ask question and the Prophet ﷺ was quite clear. We agree on one God and the messengers. We disagree on the very status of Jesus as the Son of God. We don't believe in this 
and it shows here that the Prophet ﷺ was quite clear in trying to get the similarities but being quite explicit about the differences. And then he didn't expect and didn't even ask them, you have to convert. Okay, this is your freedom. You have your religion, I have mine. So this is the way it has to be uh, among us. And before they were to leave, they asked if they were, it was possible for them to pray within the mosque. And the Prophet ﷺ, you know, the companions said, no, no, you can't pray here, because for them they were not really monotheistic uh, in the way they were dealing with religion. He said, let them pray within the mosque. They turned towards east and they prayed within the mosque. Look at this. Look at the Prophet ﷺ. He is now building his community. It's a time of building. It's a time of weakness still. And say, so, okay, come, we discuss. You have your religion. I have mine. We don't agree on some essential principles. And you can pray here. One of those who was there, who wanted even to go with the Christian delegation back to Najran, he didn't go at the end, was Omar ibn al-Khattab. Omar ibn al-Khattab, years later, he was in Jerusalem and he was visiting Jerusalem and he entered within a church and they told him, you can pray here. You know what he did? He went out of the church and prayed outside saying, in fact, if I pray within, people after me will hear that I prayed within, they will demolish the church. So I pray outside. Look at this. Not only he was showing this respect towards the holy places of the Christians and all the other religions, but he knew how the Muslims are very emotional with some of the, the Islamic uh, uh, the principles and with their belonging to the religion to the point that they can destroy churches while this is not the way Islam is uh, teaching us to be with the other religions. Last uh, uh, point for this session. After Badr, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, were, came back to um, uh, Medina and he was expecting Ahl Quraysh to retaliate, to seek revenge. And he heard from Abbas, who sent him this information, there are 3,000 men coming towards Medina, so be prepared. So he prepared and he had a meeting with his companions straight away. What do we have to do? Do we wait for them here or do we go outside the city just to face the enemy? And they had a discussion. The Prophet ﷺ was of the opinion to stay within the city to let them in and to, uh, to ambush them within the city. The great majority, because they were young, they wanted to experience what was experienced in bad, said, no, we go. So he lost and then he went and he put on his, uh, 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 his uh, uh, he prepared, in fact, to go for war and for the battle. And when the young uh, uh, companions uh, looked at him and saw him go straight, they said, oh, maybe we made a mistake. He said, no. The decision was taken, it's a majority process, it's a consultation. When the decision is taken, now we go. So they went and they went outside and he, uh, uh, when arrived in close to Uhud, what he did is he organized his strategy facing uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Quraysh coming with 3,000. It was a, a great number and this was to be a very difficult uh, battle. So he put the archers on uphill, he let the horsemen within in the plain and said you are going to face but you you have to stay here to uh, uh, prevent the, the army to come from behind the hill and to attack the Muslims. And it started like this and everything went well at the beginning. At one point, the archers, they were uphill. They saw that the Muslims were winning and they saw the booty there and they, they were thinking about, oh, they will get this and we are not going to get that. And they left their place. They left and they didn't obey the Prophet, they didn't obey and they forgot the order. 
And at that point, one commander from Al Quraysh saw this. So he went through the hill. You know who he was? Khalid ibn al Walid. Khalid ibn al Walid was the, uh, the hero for the Quraysh in Uhud because he went and it was a catastrophe for the Muslims. Even the people thought that the Prophet ﷺ was killed, so he was protected by the companions and they lost more than 70 people and they lost physically and they lost really and they lost symbol symbolically. And this is because some of the uh, archers were so attracted by money and booty that they were able to forget everything about the orders. Meaning for us, whatever is the level of your faith, whatever you are involved in, even in a war, even in a struggle, you may end up forgetting the essential and being attracted by things that are your own desires, your own instincts, money, power. And this is what happened to the companions at, at that point. And the Prophet ﷺ was so sad of what happened because, in fact, he lost so many, uh, so many companions during this because of what the companions uh, did, forgetting the essential, forgetting the orders. And the, 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 the second teaching here is for us also to be very careful. You know, at that point, Khalid ibn al-Walid was the biggest enemy. He ended up being the, a great Muslim leader. So you have to suspend your judgment. Vis-a-vis -vis the people who were not obeying the order and vis-a-vis -vis Khalid ibn al-Walid who ended up coming close to and being a Muslim serving uh, what was right. Last thing out of this story is that, in fact, when the Prophet ﷺ came and was in uh, uh, Medina, he had two options. One was to be very harsh with the Muslims, you didn't obey and you forget uh, uh, my order and that's not acceptable, or to deal with them in another way. And the Quran is saying about this story, something that we have to remember. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَاعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ It's by a grace of from God that you were gentle with them. Had you been harsh, hard-hearted, they would have dispersed from around you, so pardon them and ask forgiveness for them and consult them in the conduct of the affairs. And when you make a decision, put your trust in God. God loves the ones who trust him. So here it's a teaching that we have. He took the option of forgiveness, of uh, being open with them, and as it was said not to be too harsh. And this is because of that, that they, did, they, 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 they didn't uh, reject him and disperse uh, from, from him. And they said, and they uh, stayed with him in uh, the future. This story is teaching us that at the end of the day, you should stick to your principles. You should respect your principles. And the Islamic principle is when you take a decision, you consult. And it's not right or wrong to consult depending on the results. It's the principle, whatever the result. And this is what he got coming in uh, from God is in, in this verse. It was against your opinion. You wanted to stay within the city. You had to go. They didn't obey and you lost. And at the end, uh, what happened in the, in the community is that these people were just responsible for great defeat. And then you have to forgive them and you still have to consult them. Shawirhum. And we know that a Muslim, the, Mus the Muslims are those who Shura uh, amruhum uh, shura baynahum that they have this consultation as a principle in the way they deal with their affairs. So this is what we got from the Quran and this is what the Prophet ﷺ understood. 
whatever the result, trust God, stick to the principles, forgive the people, and just be inclusive. Welcome the people. They, make, they can make mistakes and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But the point is with generosity, with rifq, rifq, generosity and gentleness, you will keep them close to you and they will get at the end the principles if and only if you rely on God and you teach them by making things easy for them. Don't forget to tell the people you love that you love them. Life is fragile.